Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrea Almeida, and I'm really happy today to talk about Power Meta and the work we do in this space. So, let's start from a traditional way, from a story. Many, many years later, in a post-apocalyptic world, there was a big blackout worldwide. All digital records have been wiped out and people live in general fear and disbelief. There was a little boy who was diagnosed with transient global amnesia. So he would repeatedly ask the same questions again and again. And sometimes he would have no recollections of what happened a few hours ago or a few days ago. The world had then been divided into two communities, human beings like you and me and humanoids, whom we called artificial intelligence, rather condescendingly, and then GPT-powered AI and so on. Those names have since become obsolete after the big blackout. It is common ideology that we are all deemed as equal beings, Equal intellectual creatures, no matter by mother, by gods, or in labs. Authorities in the human tribes become very concerned about the little boy's amnesia because, you see, memory loss has long been associated with humanoids only. Their memories are, after all, fabrications of human memory. Therefore, lags and gaps are commonplace. Could this be a conspiracy then? Could this little boy be someone whose identity has been implanted um, as an attempt to infiltrate the human society? There was no way to know unless he goes through a memory test. Because human beings are temporal beings and we live in moments that make up our memories that extend in our subconscious and further into our dreams. The little boy is sleepless tonight. He sat till dawn. Tomorrow would be his judgment day, a day where his humanity is determined solely by his memory, not unlike how one day our civilization is going to be evaluated by our retention of data and digital records in the face of disasters. Now let me properly introduce ourselves. Power Meta is an infrastructure and technology provider with focus on building a solid foundation and network for disaster recovery data storage, thanks to the technology of IPFS and Falcon blockchain. So for people who think I'm going into technical details after, but please don't walk away, because I assure you, the ending is going to be every bit as fun as the opening. Right, so for new friends who haven't heard of us yet, this is who we are, or how we see ourselves. As a heavy infrastructure provider, we want to be a ship that carries all data that humanity cares for and sails into the future a Noah's Ark in the form of a decentralized disaster recovery network with low storage cost, high security and privacy for governments and enterprises worldwide. So what we do is simple. We do data backup, retrieval and disaster recovery and I'm talking about the data that we simply won't let go, like government security data, our genome sequences, our favorite piece of art history, or our grandmother's photos. So we make sure that we use the most advanced technologies available for blockchain storage, privacy protection, security, and etc. And we provide two simple services, mining as a service to continuously expand this network, as well as our disaster recovery data storage. So to put our going perspectives of figures, our goal is to build 10,000 decentralized disaster recovery nodes, that is in total, of 10 exabyte storage capacity and charging only one-tenth 
of what the current provider is charging you. Looks a little daunting, eh? Well, not at all. Because we've been here long enough, and luckily we've planned ahead. With more than 10 IDCs in five countries, we used to manage a global storage capacity of 1,600 petabytes. Our data centers have been virtually everywhere, Asia Pacific, North America, Europe, and we make every effort to stay green, to stay afloat in this Makura industry, because we want to outlive everyone and to be actually in that post-apocalyptic world. Our IDCs are aligned with all 17 of ESG goals with our data center in the US, ISO 27001 certified. We only make use of high efficiency power supplies and server virtualization and have been exploring options to have at least 80% of our electricity renewably resourced by 2030. So this is what we have achieved today. We have successfully deployed 35 decentralized storage nodes across the globe. We have stored around 40 petabytes of disaster recovery data. And our vault node, our very own enterprise storage solution, is only eight cents per tip per month. That is around one fifth of what AWS is charging. We're getting there. So now I want to ask two things from you. Number one, we invite you to become a miner with us to join this disaster recovery effort because we truly believe that this shouldn't be a cost of just our own. And number two, we invite you to store with us, to entrust your cold data with us because we make it our business to safeguard your data for eternity. Right, and so for friends who have been in the Hong Kong file gathering, these two services are no longer just prototypes or pilots. Uh, they are fully online and incredibly user-friendly, and I encourage you to try them out. So this is Aurora Global Mining as a Service. I know it's titled uh, Miners Bootcamp, but it's actually more like a summer camp because we do all the heavy lifting for you. We provide hardware, technology, the data center space, and of course, we pay for electricity bills. So we set you up from zero to owning your own disaster recovery code within one month's time. And for people who love DIYs, we also offer bring your own server kind of option. So feel free to scan the QR code over there to check us out. And one last thing, for whoever who has mined with us or contributed to this network, we offer one year free trial of our Volnode enterprise storage solution, free of charge. And yes, this is a solution itself. So whether you're governments, medical centers, technology, or nonprofits, you name it, as long as you have stored data on AWS S3 or have an API, you may log on onto our portal and have your data smoothly transfer onto IPFS via Volnode and store forever with us at only one fifth of the cost. The portal is ready for instant upload of test data today. Please feel free to give it a try. Now, we've finally come to the topic of data partners. So here are just a few categories of data clients with whom we have been in conversations and have made some progress. So from to top to bottom, there's government, knowledge and education institutes, and technology. We consider ourselves to be incredibly lucky to have been accepted by government blockchain associations and have been in conversations with a couple of officials in various departments while getting our Volnode, the storage solutions um, product from the last slide, certified by BMM. It's a blockchain maturity model that is developed internally by government blockchain associations. And for knowledge and education institutes, we've made some progress with a couple of institutes in Europe and Asia. In terms of technology, we have been very honored to be approached by some friends who used to store their data with traditional storage means and are willing to let us test waters with their semi-code sort of data. I'm not 
trying to downplay here the challenges that we have faced in this scene because there's a huge knowledge gap still between us and people who are only familiar with traditional storage. All I'm saying is we're working relentlessly, including getting ourselves certified, as well as to sort out granular details, like working out challenges of our data clients when they're facing different sets of data governance policies. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to give you a recap of our destiny as a three infrastructure provider, disaster recovery is to preserve humanity's most precious data by incorporating the most advanced technologies in our DR solutions and continuously expand that DR network. But however, I believe our destiny does not end here. I'm super excited to announce that we have since started a new business segment since we last spoke at Hong Kong File Gathering. And I would now like to dive into another story, a story about imagination this time, that also serves as a prelude to where I believe our destiny lies. Another few centuries flew by. We now live on planet P. Due to the extreme weather and living conditions, we no longer exist entirely in our flesh and blood. We are enhanced in all senses to breathe better, to fight better, to remember better, and most importantly, to imagine better. And that is Rachel from Blade Runner 2019. Enhancements are more common than plastic surgery once was. A once popular and the crudest form of enhancement to human history. And because of that, because of all sorts of enhancements, people live in different contexts. The cat you see could be very different from mine. Was it a snobbish English short hair? or a grumpy Persian long hair. It all comes to our so-called computing and rendering efficiency. Due to inequity in computing resources, your context is very different from mine in depths, colors, and pixels. At this right moment, are you seeing a blue or an orange goldfish? Because we virtually live in all kinds of simulations, sort of monopolized by big companies that we all know, dream architects are selected in every corner of the world based on their talent and ability to imagine. To be a dream architect, of course, you would need to have some talent, genetic maybe, of what's left in the human you, and trainings simulations, lots and lots of trainings to make your imagination as accurate, vivid, and relatable in every detail as possible. Not every family can afford that. Now sitting in front of you is a little boy named Azar from a humble family who has gone through years and years of trainings. And he just won a most prestigious award in an imagination competition hosted by a big technology company in their talent selection program. His and his family's lives are going to be changed forever because, because he has created the most beautiful and original dream that no one has ever dreamt of. That evening, he showed his award-winning dream to his dad, grandma, and grandpa at dinner table. They hugged him and nodded in great happiness and rejoice in how great this piece of art is. Despite the fact that the family has stopped upgrading or enhancing themselves ever since the boy had dreamed to be a dream architect. So from the very far left to the right are his family's receiving ends. Let's not ever run out of computing resources and storage space. And let's not make imagination a luxury good. 
Thanks for bearing with me. Now I've come to the second part of our destiny, and I think you've guessed it. Our other calling is to create an equal opportunity so that everyone has equitable access to AI computing power. We are building a decentralized platform where anyone, individual startups, small to medium business owners, will have equal access to computing resources by hours to start, test, and scale their AI project so that no one will lose out in this crazy imagination game. And of course, everything will be stored on IPFS. So our engineers have already developed a software based on Kubernetes that pulls computing resources from the GPU hosts. Um, so owners of machines and virtual machines that my previous speaker has related to further containerize them into different AI training models, of course, and other applications too. So if you look on the right-hand side, you're bound to recognize a couple of your favorite AI tools winning, winning models, including my favorite one, MidJourney. Um, and these are just examples. With Equitable AI, I trust that everyone will be able to make their own AI tool that specifically works for their imagination. And last but not least, this is a summary page in case you've missed out on the services that we're already offering and those that are work in progress. Oh, I apologize for that. So from the top, the blue accents is supposed to be our infrastructure cloud services, the disaster recovery, GPU rental services that we provide for governments and enterprises, and the green accents are applications and portals that are free for access for everyone. There's Aurora Global, which is mining as a service, our Vault Node, the disaster recovery data storage portal, and our work in progress, Equitable AI. I know we're not perfect, but Power Meta will meet you there in the future, a world where everything is remembered and everyone can freely imagine. Thank you. Thank you for having me.